Well, if the Eagles play with anywhere close to uh, what they played on a Monday night, I expect this game to be over uh, by midway through the third oh, quarter, oh, 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 uh, to be quite oh, oh. honest with you. Welcome to Pond Lee Hockey. We've helped over 100,000 injured and disabled workers obtain benefits, as well as some of the biggest settlements in the state. If you've been injured at work, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Yes. Welcome in to the Jacob Media pregame show. And we are coming to you live from Ocean Casino Resort, the gallery bar, book and games, your home for your head day, uh, rather game day headquarters. Enjoy food, drink specials, and watch all your favorite games right here at Ocean Casino Resort. It is absolutely gorgeous here in Ocean Casino, having ourselves a heck of a time as we do every week when we do the pregame show here for Jacob Eady and Ocean Casino. With me, of course, Eagles Hall of Famer Seth Joyner and veteran Eagles reporter Mr. Derek Gunn. Welcome in, fellas. Great to see you again. We're all riding high after last week's Monday night, or should I say Monday night's victory <laughs> over the Minnesota Vikings as the Eagles have a short turnaround. We're all still very much impressed with what we saw from quarterback Jalen Hurts, and now the Eagles today, Gunner, are facing their former once franchise quarterback, or at least thought to be, Carson Wentz today. What are your expectations for game day today? Well, if the Eagles play with anywhere close to uh, what they played on a Monday night, I expect this game to be over uh, by midway through the third quarter, oh, 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 uh, to be quite honest with you. I've studied this Washington team up and down the chart, and they are devoid of talent in a lot of ways. And they are having the same problems that they had a season ago, especially on defense. Lack of communication players playing out of position. I don't understand it because for the most part, most of those players have played together for more than a year. So is it the message being sent by Jack Del Rio? Are the players not just listening? But whatever the case may be, this Washington defense has been a sieve through the first two games of the season. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> Usually it's, it's for Seth Joyner right between the eyes, but here we got Gunner starting off with that. Seth, your expectations for today? I expect for it to be a battle all the way through, and the Eagles are going to struggle. No, I'm just <laughs> um, I was about to say, what? <laughs> Listen, I, I've studied them as well. Um, D. Gunn is talking about what he sees over on the, on the defensive side of the ball, and they certainly are deficient there. But they have some talent on the offensive side of yep. the ball. And Carson has played well, but Carson is another one of those quarterbacks like all quarterbacks, like the two quarterbacks that the Eagles have just faced, that if you bring pressure on him, okay, he doesn't move like he used to move. There was a time when you blitzed him, he was one of the best quarterbacks under pressure, under blitz in the NFL. I don't think he's that anymore. And I think the biggest mistake that the Eagles defensively can make today is to sit back and allow him to operate from a clean, comfortable pocket. They've got to force the issue. and. Dare I say, you know, I said it last week that I'm not a I'm not a huge believer in trap games. I just think that when you're mentally in the right place and your mind is on winning and you put in the work, that there's no such thing as taking an opponent lightly. But this is one of those games that if you get comfortable with what you did last week because you made the adjustments from the week before, you can go into a game like this. Listen, the 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 the, the commanders want to win this game for Carson Wentz. So they're going to come out with some fire to start this thing. The Eagles have to figure out how to take any doubt out of this game early. D. Gunn said by the mid midway through the third quarter, listen, if you go back to last week, if they just, if you wipe the penalties away offensively last week, all of those down the field, all of those illegal receivers down the field, if you wipe that out, this football team scores 40 points, okay? If they can protect Car if they can protect Jalen in the first game, they should score darn near 50 points. You're gonna tell me against this defense D gun? Yeah. This defense today, if they play the game the way that they're supposed to play, this damn game ought to be over by halftime. Oh, you said halftime. <laughs> you guys said, all right, I'm gonna to try to top you. 
end of the first quarter. Just, <laughs> done, it'll be 30 to nothing, and the Eagles will just ride it home after that. No, but in all sincerity, I'm, I do have a lot of confidence, as you gentlemen do as well, in the Eagles winning this game today against the Commanders. First matchup against the Commanders, quote-unquote. But something that I find very interesting about this game, I know the headline is going to be Carson Wentz versus Jalen Hurts, and everyone's going to talk about that, and we'll certainly talk about that more as the show goes on today. And John McMullen will be joining us from FedEx Field a little bit later on in the program. But I think the biggest matchup it is, doesn't really have to do with guys on the field. One guy on the field, Jalen Hurts, and that's against Ron Rivera, and that's against Jack Del Rio. Now, uh, Seth, you're a little familiar with Ron Rivera, just a little bit in his history. When it comes to defending against Jalen Hurts, what do you think Jack Del Rio and Ron Rivera are going to have in store for him today? Well, listen, they know that Jalen Hurts is more dangerous outside of the pocket than he is in the pocket. Well, that's the thought. I think last week he proved to us that he can operate from the pocket just fine, and he only ran when he needed to. Um, I think they want him to operate from the pocket. Listen, they play a lot of zones. They're going to do some disguise, and they're going to try to. They're not going to be as bland as the Minnesota Vikings were last year. What they're going to do is, they, last week I should say, they're going to try to confuse Jalen Hurts. And Jalen Hurts has got to get his pre-snap read and understand that if those guys up front can keep that front four, and it is a formidable front four when they really want to play. If they can keep him clean, they want him to operate from the pocket. He's got to prove again this week that he can operate from the pocket because they're, they're, they're just not going to let him. They don't want him moving around and converting third downs with his legs. They don't want him making big plays when they choose to be in man-to-man -man coverage, which, is, which isn't a lot. They want him to be able to break down the defense, figure out where the holes are, and decipher where he has to throw the ball from the pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, Gutter, no doubt, last week was absolutely a huge check mark in the win column for the Jalen Hurts is the franchise quarterback for the foreseeable future crowd. Can he do it again? Can he show that consistency again today? Well, based on his two-game performance, absolutely. He had to come out and play two different games against Detroit. He had to run for his life, and he beat him with his legs. Second game, Vikings, uh, Ed Donatel set back there on his own defense, and Jalen picked him apart. So we've seen him play two different games in a span of eight days. I don't know what Washington is going to try to throw at him, but they cannot sit back in the zone. If they try to play man-to-man -man with those wide receivers, they're going to kill him. They're going to have to mix it up somewhat. I don't know if Washington has the personnel. The one thing we know about this Washington defense is they have given up big plays. Prime example, last week against Detroit, Detroit's offense had 425 yards of offense. Six of those plays accounted for 227 yards of their offense. So that's why I said off the top of the show, Washington's defense has major problems. As I've talked to a number of players, I had Brian Mitchell on our show, uh, Sports Take on Friday, and he talked about the same thing we were talking about last year with this Washington defense. Why has it not gelled yet? If it doesn't gel quickly, this thing is going to unravel, unravel a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And especially when you look at their run defense, especially last week against the Detroit Lions, 191 yards mm. on the ground Absolutely. alone were allowed by this Washington Commanders defense. So if you're Boston Scott, if you're Miles Sanders, if you're Kenny Gainwell, and even Jalen Hurts to an extent, I mean, Gunner, you got to be licking your chops looking at what could be in front of you today. Well, there's no question about it. I mean, th this, this Washington front is, is like a picket fence. It has holes all over it. And the opponents were averaging almost seven, eight yards a carry against this Washington defense. Now, when you talk about Jonathan Allen and De'Ron Payne, they're one of the best one-two tackle, D-tackle combinations in the game. But they're not getting much help. The linebacking core is worse than it was a year ago. The secondary is a little bit worse than it was a year ago. Who's going to step up and make some plays? When I've listened to the Washington players this week talk about the things they need to do to make changes, they all say, we're going to get better. The big question for Washington fans is, when? <laughs> well, you can certainly have the will to get out there and do that. But when it comes to overall talent, Seth, do they have the talent to step up and make plays against guys like Miles Sanders? Well, listen, they put this defense together, you know, over the years of five first-round draft picks on the defensive line. And they were on track to be a very, very good defense. But then, you know, injuries took place. When you lose a guy like um, gosh, Chase Young, when you lose a guy like Chase Young, uh, that's huge to your defense because, I mean, he was the best defensive player that they had. And – when you've got a great defensive front, it makes up for a lot of holes and a lot of problems that you have within your defense. If they're getting pressure, your cornerbacks and your safeties, they have to cover a lot less longer. Um, 
when you're dominating and you're in the backfield, you keep your linebackers cleaner and they can flow to the ball and make plays. But when guys are injured and you don't have your top guys there, um, it makes it makes a huge difference. Uh, I, I don't. I just. Unfortunately, you know, fortunately for the Eagles, unfortunately for them, you know, they find themselves in this situation. D. Gunn said, "When it's been the last three, four years that they've built this defensive line, and they haven't been able to bring everything else along with it." No fault of Ron Rivera's. No particular fault of Jack Del Rio. It is what it is. When the Eagles a couple of years ago, after they won the Super Bowl, went through their little injury spree, you know, no one was feeling sorry for them. I'm not feeling sorry for the Washington Commanders right now. I'm, I'm just not. It's just injuries are a part of the game. And this is why I say, you know, you got to play your players when you got to play them so you can get them ready because listen, injuries are going to happen and they're either going to get injured in the preseason or they're going to get injured in the first two weeks of the season. So what, what's the difference? You might as well try to get them prepped and get them hardened for the season so that they don't miss time during the season. But from a talent perspective, you know, all their talent is over on the offensive side of the ball. Certainly. Plain and simple. Certainly. And looking at that side of the football when it comes to the Washington Commanders, they have a very diverse receiving core. We could talk about the Eagles. I will give the Eagles the check mark in that column for having a better unit than obviously Washington does. But they have three guys that can hurt you as wide receivers, as members of the Commanders' targets of Carson Wentz. So that makes me look at this, de this defensive back unit right now. When you look at what Jalen Hurts did, I think right after him, the next grouping that was probably the most impressive last week and maybe through the season to this point, through two weeks, only is the defensive back position for the Philadelphia Eagles and when you look at what you saw Bradbury do last week you saw Maddox do last week and of course the reigning defensive player of the week Darius Slay Slay what he did last week with his two picks can they match that same level of play from last week to this week oh there's no question about it I think they showed us on Monday night they are very capable of playing man to man across the board they did a great job of taking Adam Thielen out of the game when you hold a Justin Jefferson under 50 yards receiving in a game you've more than done your job Darius Slay easily should have had five picks. You know, Vontae Maddox covered a slot guy. Outstanding job. Even when um, C.J. Johnson had to come up and cover. Outstanding job. Bradbury covering receivers coming across the slot. Outstanding job. What more can you ask? Now, you look at this Minnesota offense. They have three wide receivers compared to Minnesota relying on two. And there's a kid named Cam Sims who hasn't even got a touch because of the other three guys in front of him. So I'm waiting to see how they're going to deploy. I think the best way Washington can attack the Eagles' defense is to shorten up their passing routes. To keep the ball, to keep the, um, Jonathan Gannon wants to have his DBs lay back a little bit, hit them with the underneath routes, force the DBs to come up and then try to take a shot. If you let Carson Wentz stand back there and pat the ball a little bit too much, it's going to be a long afternoon for Carson Wentz. But listen, I, I'll say this. The Eagles' defense and secondary and Jonathan Gannon, what, what did you find out last, last week? You found out that your defensive backfield is pretty damn good. That's right. That, you know, you can stand up against arguably the best wide receiver in football and shut him down. Adam Thielen is no slouch. Kirk Cousins just doesn't target him as much as he really needs to. But it appears to me that he was taken care of even though he didn't get the targets last week or he would have got more targets. So what does that tell you? That tells you you have more than enough Avante Maddox interception last week quietly you don't hear a whole lot about him but quietly he just goes about his business and, do, and does his job I'm not worried about this receiving core because one thing that Carson Wentz wants to do in this offense and I've watched two the last two game films on him they like to throw the ball short you know they just want to dink and dunk and he wants to get the ball out of his hands that means that the pressure is not necessarily going to get there Guys are going to have to get their hands up, knock some balls down. He's still getting balls batted like crazy. He's still missing some throws that that was his undoing when he was here at the end. Running backs on little over routes into the flats that he's not – he's off his target, his accuracy is off. Wide receivers, you know, that are wide open on sail routes and seam routes that he's not, he's not accurate with. So what they've done is they've, they've created a very, very – you know, short, intermediate passing game for him to help him get the ball out of his hands and just move the chains and move down the field. So you know that you can get up and challenge these wide receivers. Do it. Do what you did last week without worry about get, being beat over the top. Because if you don't, if you sit back in zone and you let him just advance the ball, listen, they're going to keep drive, drives alive. 
and they're going to score points and they're going to make more of this game than it really should be. You know, when you and then pick your pick your poison. When you get a lead and you can you you have you have the ability to create pressure, then come after them. Because they really want to throw the ball. All you got to do is look at them statistically. Carson's thrown 87 times. You want to know how many times they ran the football? 37 times. Right. I mean, are you kidding me? You, you, you're going to put the ball in that guy's hands that many times, an average of 40-plus times a game. I'm surprised all he has is, is three, three interceptions. I think one of the biggest reasons why is because Washington has had to play come from behind football in both games. That's why they've thrown the ball 87 times. You look at Washington's stats, they're averaging almost 400 yards a game offensively. But how misleading is that? Because they've had to play catch up in both games, which means they've had to go exclusively to the passing game. They're only averaging 86 yards a game rushing. So Antonio Gibson has not even been a factor much in the offense because they've fallen behind so much. And the Eagles need to keep it that way. They I'm need sorry. to keep it that way. I agree. <laughs> but I got my problem is I worry about will Jonathan Gannon have his cornerbacks playing seven to nine yards off the wide receivers because now we've seen they have the speed to come up and make the plays. So, D, let me, let me ask you a question. Yeah. You know, and I'm just going to come straight out with it. Everybody knows that Nick Fangio has been a, an advisor over there. We've seen some things out of John DeGan last week that we haven't seen. No question. A year and a game. Okay? Is there some advising going on as far as because some of the – some of the creative things that he did, we, we never saw the kind of creativity where delayed blitzes and things like that, guys coming off the slot. That was late and delayed where the quarterback, it was too late for the protection to pick it up, okay? So did, did Jonathan Gannon have some other playbook somewhere that he wasn't using? Or do you get the sense that some of this stuff that you're seeing comes out of Vic Fangio's playbook and he's being advised? Well, I think he's getting advice somewhere, and I also think he's listening somewhat to the public cry. I mean, you know, a lot of pe- a lot of defenses. I cried all that. I know you did. Other. I had to listen to it. I know you did. Um, I, I think we we hear about so many defensive schemes are based off of Nick Fangio's playbook, and we're starting to see it across the league. I think Monday night, Jonathan Gannon experimented a little bit more. He found out that indeed, as we all knew, he has much better talent to incorporate than he did a season ago. And he came away saying, hey, this worked. This worked a lot better than I thought it would. So I want to see him do more of that. I don't want to see every other week because that's going to drive us nuts. My only concern is that, you know, listen, pressure changes everything. Absolutely. Game, okay. So if you can create pressure, even if, you've got, even if you've got less talent, you can make lesser talent look better because of pressure. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not saying, let me look in the camera and let you guys know. I'm not talking about Buddy Ryan-type pressure. Okay, this era of football can't stand that type of pressure. But there has to be pressure built into what you do from a defensive perspective. So people kept saying, oh, last year he didn't have this, he didn't have that. Well, if you had the kind of creativity that we saw last week, you could have done anything you wanted last year because you could have taken some of the things that you did against the Minnesota Vikings and how uncomfortable you made Kirk Cousins. And you could have implemented that into what you did last year, and it might have won you three or four more games than you actually won, in my opinion. You might not want to hear this, Seth, right now, but through two games, the Eagles' front four has not convinced me that they can get enough pressure on quarterbacks consistently to rely on the front four. So with that said, I need to see more Jonathan Gannon, linebackers blitzing. Cornerbacks coming down in the box, delayed safety blitzes. That's the best way to attack. And because of the versatility and athleticism on the back end of that defense, they're more than capable of doing that. I want to see him figure out what, how to better utilize um, Hassan Reddick. Okay, I mean it's one thing to line him up in obvious passing situations at defensive end and let him go. Um, I'm tired of looking at him in the five-man front drop off in coverage and look highly inadequate at trying to cover guys, you know, in, in the flat because that's not what he does, okay? Let's line him up in some five-man front. Quarterback's, quarterback gets into his cadence. Let's slide to a five-man, a four-man line, pull him off the ball, okay? And let's bring him A gap, B gap, you know, some slam stunts. Do some different things with this guy. He's too talented to be playing – 
at a level that he's playing right now, you know, and they didn't bring him in here to drop in the flat. No. And, and, and zone coverage and, and, and all that nonsense. They brought him in here because his last year in Arizona, he had double-digit sacks. His last year, last year in Carolina, he had double-digit sacks. And they brought him in here because we don't have a double-digit sack guy. They brought him in just for that reason. So let's figure out a better way to utilize his ability and verify the reason why you brought him here and paid him all of that money. I, I, I said it last week, and I'll say it again this week. When you look at some of the best defensive attackers in the game, what's the common denominator? They move those pieces around. You don't see Michael Parsons standing in one place. You don't see Zadarius Smith attacking all the time from one place. When I look at Hassan Reddick, two games, he's always on one side. you got to move him around. He is not that efficient when it comes to defending run. We obviously know he can't cover in the past. But he is a pure pass rusher. Get your money's worth out of this man. Move him around and let that man attack the whole game. Let him eat. The, the, the other thing, I know you got to go to a break, but the, <laughs> the, other, the other thing, too, is just understanding. I think we saw more stunts out of this defensive line last game yep, yep. than we've seen over the last year of this defense. Okay? So now, how do you begin to set him up, Hassan Reddick, and every other rusher on the outside to be able to get to the quarterback? If you can run some stunts that all of a sudden makes the offensive line think about stunts, now when you go to straight pass rush, I'm thinking, oh, they might run an ET or a TE or a, a TT swap, you know? So do some of that stuff. For the longest, all they did was just line up and try to win one-on-ones. Mm. You know, one of your defensive tackles is going to get double. You got a tight end to stay in, or you go max protect. You got a tight end and a back. Now you got seven guys blocking four. You can't win that. <laughs> Well, uh, I may have repeated kindergarten, but I'm not dumb enough, ladies and gentlemen, to jump in the middle of a conversation about defense <laughs> between these two. Uh, coming back, we are going to take a closer look at Carson Wentz. We have a nice little graphic to show you guys about how the Eagles can get to him and what he's been doing as of late. We'll be back in a minute on the Jacob Media pregame show. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. 